Hi everybody, I hope you're well. This is one of the most exciting videos I've made for a long time because not only am I at the stunning Delamere Manor in Cheshire with my friend Kit, but for the very first time I'm going to be using the brand new Magmod XL kit. I can't wait. So, let's crack on. So before we get into this video properly, and I'm going to show you how I created this image of kit using the new Magmod XL modifiers, I'm going to pass you over to me to talk through what is in this case. So let's open up the Magmod XL case and see what is inside. As you'd expect with anything Magmod, it's a very cool design. So here we have the new Magsphere XL, two grids, each which control the light slightly differently, the Magmod XL reflector, and inside here we have three CTO gels, full CTO, half CTO, and a quarter CTO. At the heart of the new system is the Magmod Reflector XL, and this is how you attach the XL to your strobe. This comes with a Bowen's mount, which is how I attached the XL to the AD400 in this video. And a little bit like a snoot, you can pull out the reflector to change the beam of the light. So if you have it compact like this, you're going to get a wider spread of light. Whereas if you pull out the reflector, the beam of light is going to be slightly narrower. It's also, how we can attach CTO gels to the system. So here's a full CTO that just goes in here like this, really easy and it's already in. So it's very, very straightforward to attach the gels. Sphere, as you'll be aware, is an amazing modifier. Just to compare, here is the original, so you can see the size difference. And as with the original, this just softens the edge of the light, which is really nice, especially for portrait. And we have two grids now. The magnets are very strong, I'm fighting with them here. This one offers a 20 degree beam of light and this one is a 40 degree. So if you do want a little bit of a wider spread, go with the 40. If you want a very narrow beam of light, very to control the light really well, then go with the 20. And as with everything Magmod, we can easily stack all these modifiers together. So here's our reflector with the grid and then the Magsphere on top of that, the Magsphere XL, I should say. So let me just stress again why you would want to use the Magmod XL. It's basically to allow you to still use Magmod modifiers and control the light like we're used to, but with larger strobe, which is going to give you more power. So for example, if you're in very bright ambient conditions outside and you want to try and overpower the sun, for example, in the past, if you wanted to use Magmod modifiers, you will be restricted to just using speed lights, which is great, but you don't have a lot of flash power. Whereas we can now use Magwad XL on larger strobes. That gives us more flash power, which means that we can overpower very bright conditions. So that's really cool. And that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. So without further ado, let's go back to the video. So the shot that I had in mind here is to have Kiss on the stairs here as she is with this beautiful building of Delmere Manor in the background. But a couple of things to note. One, this is probably the worst time to be doing a portrait shoot like this because, well, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Sunset at the moment is at nine o'clock. So we're eight hours before sunset. This is horrible, harsh light. So it would not be a time that I would usually use off camera flash, but I can now because with the new Magmod modifiers, I can use strobes. So rather than just using the 860 speed lights, which I normally do, which don't have very much power, that's why I'm often using them indoors or in low ambient light conditions. I can now use Magmod modifiers on a larger strobe. And I'm gonna to use today the Godox AD400. That's going to give me two times the power of a Godox AD200. So that will allow me to overpower the sun. As it happens, I'm not gonna have the sun in the shot, but Kit's dress, as you can see, is going to be very reflective. So I want to underexpose the whole scene and in doing so, that means I need a lot of flash power. Hence why I'm going to use the AD400. So we're going to start that now. I'm going to set up the AD400 and put on a new Magmod Sphere XL. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is take two images and composite them together. And then in a second, I'm going to show you in Lightroom and Photoshop how I'm going to do that. The reason is I want to underexpose this scene massively. 
to keep the contrast in the sky, to make the sky look really dramatic, and also just to allow me to play with the contrast afterwards. So in underexposing the scene, especially when the light is so harsh as it is at the moment, that means that Kitty's going to be very underexposed, and to light her, we need a lot of flash power. And what I'm gonna ask Helen to kindly do in a second, is once I've got my base layer image, I'm gonna ask Helen to come into the shot like this, and light Kit like that. Now, obviously, the problem with doing that is that Helen will be in the photograph. So that's why we need to take two shots and composite them together. The reason that I want to have the, the light in the frame as opposed to outside is one, because we're gonna stop the spill so we can control the light better, but also the closer the light source, the softer the light will be. So in order to get the best light, we want this to be really close to Kit. The closer, the better. That means that the light source has to be in the frame. So first of all, I'm gonna take a base layer shot of the underexposed scene, and then we'll play around with, with lighting kit with the AD400. The reason I've chosen this venue is because of this photograph. So I've got it in my head what I'd like. So I want the dress to be flowing all down the stairs here. Yeah, that looks good. So you can just hold the, the size of the veil slightly for me, Kit, if that's okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, this looks really nice. Now you can probably see, if Ellen can just point to the, the, the sun is so high. Like it's, I'm just constantly squinting doing this video, but it's to show you how we can still use off-camera flash, even in the harshest of lights, but we do need the flash power. Hence, we need a strobe rather than a speed light. So this is going to be me just taking now a photograph of this scene underexposed. When I'm taking a composite photograph like this, I want to keep the aperture the same and I just want to change my shutter speed. The other thing which I'm not going to do is change the focus point after I've taken these either. So I'm using back button focus, focusing on kit and then just underexposing. Excellent, okay. This is where the fun starts. I'm going to ask Helen now to hold the Godox AD400 with the new MagMod XL, which has got the reflector and the MagSphere as well. The huge MagSphere, it's massive. The size of it, it's like bigger than my head. But that's good because that means that the light source is bigger, so the light's going to be softer. Okay, okay if you want to just waft your arms out a bit more, that's it, yeah? Yes, good. Just to say, we are using so much flash power here, full power on a Godox AD400. We could not do this with speed lights. What we're now gonna do is just change the pose, go for something a bit more creative and ask Kit to sit down. I'm wondering if you can sort of sit, Kit, so that you're almost like this, but rather than looking like that way, you'll be more like, like that, looking up. Yeah, yeah, so you're looking directly up and then we'll put the flash straight above you. Just want to say a huge thanks to both Kit and to Helen for helping me with this shoot. As always, shoots like this are a real team effort and without the two of them, obviously, well obviously I need, <laughs> I need Kit, but without Helen's help either, she has a great eye for detail, then the shots wouldn't look as good as hopefully they will do. It's really important when you're doing a composite photograph like this that you have your camera on a tripod. That's gonna make the editing so much easier. It is possible to do shots like this, handheld. In fact, at last weekend's wedding, I took this photograph. This is a composite of three images, all handheld, but I wouldn't advise it. It makes editing tricky. So always best to use a tripod. Gonna take a few different shots here just to give myself some more options. Okay, now I'm going to go into mechanical so I can use off-camera flash. Helen is obviously in this shot, but it won't matter because we're going to composite them. Really good. Even closer, Helen, if that's okay. But that's it there. What you want to see just how nice a light quality is on kit there. Perfect. So we've got loads of base shots here. What I'm now going to do is take my favourites into Lightroom and show you how we can stitch them all together. It's going to look amazing. So over to me in Lightroom. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and you'll see these four images here. The ones in blue, these are the two RAW files that I'm going to be using to create this overall image. One, as you see here, has Helen in 
and the other one is just a kit where there's no light source in that photograph. And what I want to do, obviously, is merge those two images together. And it's actually very, very easy, as I'll show you in this video. I did edit these two images slightly just to get the exposure more where I wanted. Now, I should just say that I did make a mistake here. What you want to do if you're going to create a photograph like this is use the same aperture throughout all the exposures that are going to make up the final photograph. And I didn't because I took this one at 32,000 on my shutter speed, which you can't do if you're gonna use off-camera flash. You will have to use mechanical shutter and you are at 8,000. So I compensated with my aperture. Now you're not really gonna be able to tell in the final photograph, but just as a matter of good practice, it's best to keep your aperture the same and ideally your ISO the same throughout each of the exposures and just change the shutter speed. But I didn't do that. So you won't notice in the final photograph, but just something worth noticing. So these are the two edited versions that I'm going to take and I've married them up together so the exposures are the same in the background obviously the exposure is not the same on kit but if you look at the house there in the background it's the same on both exposures so i'm going to take both of these two versions in red here into photoshop and we'll composite them both together and here we are in Photoshop. Now, the first thing to say is that you want to open up each of the images that are going to make up the final image. So for me, and this example, it's a two-shot composite. So I've got this photograph open, which is the just the natural light version of Kit, and this version with Helen in holding the light. And this will be the main part of the photograph for the final image. So all I want to do basically is copy this part of this photograph without Helen in onto this version. That will give us a really clean final image. So to do that, I'm gonna open up this version without Helen in and select an area now which I can see on both versions of the photograph. So if I zoom in here, we can see that we can see the doorway here on both. So what I'm going to do is on this version, the one without Helen in, select the clone stamp tool. And then with the option key held down, I'm going to hover over the door and just press on my trackpad. That selected that area. And now I'm going to open up the other version and I'm going to marry that up so that it's in the exact same place. Now, if you want to make really sure, you can hold down the option key, toggle the option key, and you can then see exactly that you're in the right place. You can see here why it's really important to use a tripod, because if you're hand holding, this is a bit tricky. But there we go, that's perfect there. So I'm gonna just select there, just by clicking. Now I'm going to zoom out. Now the key thing you want to remember is you want your brush hardness to be set to zero, so it gives it a very faint edge, and the opacity to 100. And this is the fun bit, because we can now just paint over, and Helen vanishes as if by magic. There we go. I always enjoy doing that, because you can see the final photograph come to life. Now there was a little bit of spill here, on this area of the staircase compared to the other side. So I can just go over there as well, which is copying the staircase from the other image just to take away that bright spot. And that's it really. Now, a couple of things that I will do, I do clean up the image a little bit more. So I'm going to use the patch tool just to go around this area here, pressing delete. That will bring up the content aware option and then return, that will get rid of that. Maybe just li these little distracting elements, little highlights in the grass like here, I'll just get rid of as well, just to clean it all up. Oh, and the other thing, I bought this veil quite cheap off Amazon. It's a beautiful veil, but some of the material was a different color. As you can see here, this section was just very different to this. So I'm going to just go around that area and reduce the saturation of the blues just to make it a little bit more in keeping with the rest. And that's it, really, really simple. So this is just a very quick way of merging two images together to give you a really dynamic portrait. As I say, I am not an expert in Photoshop, so there may be other ways, but the clone stamp tool that I use, I've just shown you here, is really effective. A huge thank you again to Kit for modeling, she was amazing, to Helen for all her help on this shoot and for lighting kits, and also to Magmod for inviting me to be one of the very first photographers in the world. 
world to use the Magmod XL. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do stay tuned to my channel because coming up, I have another video where I use the Magmod XL that was a lot of fun with this red flying dress. I love making this video. So as always, if you have any questions about anything I've done in this video, please do let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.